What's good? Welcome back to another edition of Talk That Talk Podcast. I go by the name of Bacon. I got my co-host with me. It's Father Reasons, man. Father Reasons. <laughs> Father Reasons, man. You know, baby Jax. He wants to be a part of the show today. So I see him. He'll be a big smiler right now. He's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we got a lot to talk about today, man. We got some big games today, big game threes, some big game threes, and some big game twos as well. Um, today, could this be Giannis' biggest game of his career? It is, bro. No question. Because you know if they go down 3-0, it's over. So hmm. anything after that is just like red tape. You feel me? You just They just playing because they got to play the series out. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, to be in the bubble last year, to have Jimmy Butler and them boys send you home in five, and you hurt your ankle and you didn't play that well. Right. Um, to now, this year, you get your get back with the Heat looking real good. Yeah, yeah. Looking good. Real good. And then y'all get, get to this series, no James Harden, and y'all look pathetic. Yeah. You feel me? So a lot of, you know, we talked about it. We've, we've been critical of Budenholzer and how he's ran things since last year. We, we've believed that they had to switch it up. And we also thought that they did switch it up. Right. And now they went back to their old Milwaukee donkey days and this is where they are. So. <laughs> if, yeah. If Giannis ever want to really turn that corner and become the face <laughs> of the league. Exactly. Um, then tonight's a must win. Yes. I mean, really, these next two to me is a must win because I feel like they go down 3-1, it's over. So, No, I, I, I definitely would uh, agree. I, here's my thing, what I see with Milwaukee that, that is very troublesome, in my opinion, is that they quit in game two, tuck their tails and left. And now, it's a common theme that you're seeing right now. But the yeah. big thing is when I was watching TNT yesterday, and I'm looking at P.J. Tucker and, and uh, the Milwaukee Bucks talk about, you know, Kevin Durant, and they're glorifying him. This is the best score ever. I get that. Kevin Durant is great. He's an amazing score. But this is the playoffs. Uh, hey, what you need to be saying is, look, he's a great player. We're going to figure out a way to stop him, okay? I'm, it don't matter if we got to send one or two. We can't We can't allow them to just get whatever they want. And that's what the Nets have been getting, whatever they want. And I don't like the simple fact that Milwaukee Hart, you are the MVP, the reigning two-time, not once, but two-time MVP, and you allowed your team, you allowed your team to quit, to say, well, we're going back to Milwaukee. We should be able to get a game. It's no guarantee you're going to win in Milwaukee. It's no guarantee you about to get a W at home. I know a lot of people always think like that. Like, oh, well, when we get home, we'll be all right. Everything will be better when we get home. We'll get the crowd support. People start hitting this. So what's going to happen when you don't get that, that, that get the support you're looking for from your teammates? Because that's what they've been struggling with. The team has been struggling. I mean, nobody, I mean, nobody can score on that damn Milwaukee Bucks team. Not even Giannis, no Holiday, no Middle Knot. You know what we call, I call him, okay? Middle Knot. He can't get no bucket up. And I'm really, really nervous about Milwaukee right now. I was excited. I thought this series was the series to watch. Then James Harden gets hurt, and I'm like, maybe not so much. Maybe the Bucks get, but no, I was wrong. I was wrong. I thought it would be even. You don't have James Harden. Now the game and the team should be even. Y'all getting ran even worse. I almost wonder what would happen if James Harden was playing. Would it even be close? He's a runner. She's a track star. <laughs> yes. Big time track star. And, it, and it's disappointing to see. I hope they show fight. I, it's not always about winning. Okay? I know you want to win. But don't go out with your tails tucked. And looking like, all right, we give up. Don't ever give up on that court, man. You got to go out on your shield, okay? Go out on your shield. And I hopefully Giannis, because, again, this can be a, another damper on his legacy, a great regular season player, but he can't win in the playoffs. And you do not want that stigma. 
You do not want that stigma because we're going to talk about somebody who's been getting this stigma, who's continued to get this stigma, who the stigma this don't seem like it's going to run away. And we're talking about the Los Angeles Clippers. Man. Mm. You know what's crazy? I was like, yo, Clippers got this in the back. They have 14. They're playing good. I don't think the Jazz can match up to them right now. The way they playing, they're hot. They're in their Duffy. They're looking like the team to beat. They got even if even with Kawhi, and I'm not going to disrespect them like that. Okay, I'm gonna call him Paul George. All right, I'm not gonna call him Pandemic P and all that. I'm not gonna disrespect my brother like that. I'm just gonna say Paul George and Kawhi was having a horrible. I mean, a horrible first half. They only had nine points, but they was up by 16 because of the others. So I'm thinking second half, those two superstars or preliminary all-stars, whatever you want to call them, is going to come out and, and, and take the control of the game and get it out the way. But I was completely wrong. Mm-hmm. There was one man who refused, who refused to lose. And his name is Donovan Milkshake, oh, I thought it was, a.k.a. Mitchell. I thought it was Spider Mitchell. I know, but I just call him Milkshake because it was so it was so tasty to see him go crazy out there on the Clippers. I mean, everything he shot looked like it was an extra, extra topping. You know how you go to a Sonic and you get your little shake and you get the toppings, you get the you get the you get the M and M's, you get the Snickers, you get all that stuff, the Oreos. I felt like Donovan Milkshake, a.k.a. Spider Mitch, was in his milkshake bag. And he was giving, bro, he shook Kawhi up so crazy on one move that he turned the, he turned the opposite way. And then he got fouled on the layup. They didn't show the replay. I didn't think they wanted to show Kawhi like that. But what I'm getting to is that the Clippers, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, has to play better. You can't allow another, allow another man to outscore both of y'all again. You can't have that. You can't have that. And then they, I really felt like the Jazz was giving them the game. They didn't show up. The Jazz missed a lot of shots. Clippers had the momentum. And it just, I don't, I don't understand. I, I, I just don't understand what happened. How do you feel about the Clippers? Is it a Clippers collapse or did Donovan Mitchell just get in his duffy? Hold up, Jackson has something to say. What, what you got to say about it? Huh? You're not talking. Uh, yeah, they make you laugh. All right. Um, I think, hey, man, listen. Why is it that the Clippers keep getting torched by one man? Why is this such a thing? Like, they're supposed to be a great defensive team. Mm. And they just keep letting one man torch them. The mm. difference is, is Donovan Mitchell got, got some real hit, hitters behind him. This ain't Luca. You feel me? I felt that they was gonna be able to contain contain Mitchell. Oh, hey, homie, relax. I thought they was able to contain Mitchell, and then because they was able to contain Mitchell, the others really wouldn't be able to do too much because Mitchell was gonna be the driver. You know, you cut the head of the snake. Yeah. But nah, they couldn't contain him in the second half. He went for thirty plus in the second half. Yeah. Do you know that Donovan Mitchell has the most 30-point halves in the playoffs since 2015? Mm. Donovan Mitchell has tied the Utah Jazz record for 40-point playoff games with Carl Malone already. That's crazy. That's crazy. And we know Carl Malone was a bucket. He was the mailman, the delivery guy. Come on now. So the Clippers got to figure this out. The thing that I that that I'm interested to see is how Ty Lee's going to do this because the Clippers shot to play small, right? Yeah. That's our rebound by plus 20 on the boards. Mm. You're not going to win many games being out rebounded by plus 20, especially when your two stars are struggling from the field. Mm-hmm. So here's what this means. This means they have to play Zubac or yeah. they got to play Cousins, which means Go Bird is going to be in the lane. Now the Clippers can't just dry the ball and be all cute going to the lane because Go Bird is going to be sitting there. Yeah. So this chess match between Quinn Snyder and Tyrone Lou is going to be real interesting to see how they figure this out. But again, it goes back to what you said. Paul George and Kawhi mm-hmm. figure out who's going to score, who's going to play defense. Yeah. Because I look at it like this. PG, you really weren't giving us nothing offensively. So because you were... 
Yeah, talk your stuff. Talk your talk, Jack. Talk your talk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Because you wasn't giving him nothing offensively, I mean, you should have been really trying to lock up Donovan Mitchell on the other end. Yeah. You know what, that's what I would have did. Look, I'm struggling tonight. Ty Lu, I got him, bro. Don't worry. I'm going to just, look, I, I'm already not really giving us nothing on offense. Let me get my Duffy on defense and make it more difficult for him to help this team win. So it goes back to what you said in the Dallas series. Who's going to take that challenge of controlling Donovan Mitchell? And then who's going to take that challenge of being the scorer and then just get help from everybody else? Big facts, big facts. I, I think one thing that I will give the Clippers credit, okay? They just had a game on Sunday. They probably flew to Utah on on, on Monday, and then they got a game on Tuesday. So but don't I, you think that? But not to cut you off, bro. But don't you think that kind of helps? Because it's like I know you want the kind of intended rest, but I think that rhythm of being able to play, and then you got the Jazz who was off for five days. You know that's why that first half. That's why Game One was so right for them to steal, and they. You know, and they they blew it. You feel me? I feel like they got the advantage, especially with a team. It's not like when you think about when the Lakers went on their run and they had them days off, or when the Warriors went on their run, they had them day off, and you just got that much firepower to where probably about in the halfway through a quarter, they already going. So, you know, I I hear you when you say that, but I look at it as more of an advantage. Yeah, it was an emotional roller coaster, but I look at it as more of an advantage. I, I would say they had an advantage in the first half, which you saw, but right. I don't think that their superstars or their two preliminary scores was even there the whole game. They struggled <laughs> from start to finish. They struggled from start to finish. And I think even with Paul George on Sunday, he didn't have the best offensive game, but he did a lot defensively. He did a lot assisting, did a lot rebounding. He did a lot of the other things. Yeah, you can always impact the game more than just scoring. And I think with Kawhi and those players, that was an emotional high. They came out strong fighting. And you saw Utah, it wasn't like, the Clippers playing amazing defense. Utah was just missing wide open looks at the end of the day. Now, don't get me wrong. They was taking some bad shots at times, but reality sets in. They were just missing a good looks. And sometimes you're going to, that comes around. And what happened, they got into a rhythm because of Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell said, look, I'm not losing this game. Even though we want to give them the game, because this is the game that they can possibly win. I'm not losing this game. And he just locked into a different zone that I've yet to see by far in, in, in a lot of these playoffs. You know, you see it from Kevin Durant. You've seen it in the Kevin Durant game too, when he was just, you couldn't stop him. No matter what you put on him, who you put on him, who he had, he was getting his buckets. And you see Donovan Mitchell as another one of those. Luca has some moments like that. It, it is just what I'm seeing right now. Is the Clippers had that moment in game six against the Lakers. Exactly. D Booker came out, hit 30 points in the first quarter, damn near. And, I, and what I'm saying with the, the Clippers got to do, and I don't think they're going to do it yet. I think they're going to save their legs for when they really go lock in. And then they're going to put Kawhi Leonard on Donovan Mitchell the whole game. But the only thing is, is that they're going to move. They're going to put Kawhi in the pick and roll. And if they got a big man out there, they're going to be in trouble. So they're going to have to figure out how they're going to do that. Because even if you put Kawhi in there, all they're going to do is pick and roll on you. And Kawhi going to have to fight through that. But here's the thing, too. When you play defense, you give up some offensively. And you see it. When Kawhi is playing defense, he's not scoring as much on the offensive end. And they got to rely on the others. The others got to come through if your superstar is doing a lot on the other end. That's why I said him and Paul George have to come up with an agreement. Yo, you got first half, I got second half. They got to figure something out. And then on the fourth quarter, the best man who's guarding that day would stick the guy who's scoring the most points. I think that's the best bet for them. I don't think I, – I know the other players, Utah has a great squad. They have a great team. They have a great nucleus. But I think the Clippers could prevail if they get into their stifling defense that they're used to doing. So we'll see uh, in game two tonight if the Clippers will get back on the road. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chalk that game up to jet lag because, again, Paul George, I know he has some bad playoff performances, but he didn't look like he was there or Kawhi was there at the start of the game. It looked like everybody else who had fresh legs was playing good basketball. But you know who else is playing great?
great basketball is the Phoenix Suns, man. The Phoenix Suns are playing amazing. They're looking like the team that it, it, it has a stronghold on the West, and they could possibly go to the NBA Finals the way they're playing. Chris Paul has taken this team, and he just he's he's one of the greatest players to play this game, in my opinion. One of the greatest point guards, one of the greatest leaders, one of the greatest floor generals to ever play this game. The way he can just control the pace of the game, control the tempo of the game, control how the flow of the game works. That is just... You can't teach that. You got to have it. And, like, whenever Phoenix get flustered, Monty Whip, Chris Paul, I need you. Get in there. Get the lead going back to 10, 15, go up 20. He just knows how to get people to ball at the right time, at the right places. And Phoenix are just, they all bought in, man. And DeAndre Ayton is a superstar in the making, okay? He is a difference making. He's a difference maker at the end of the day. This team has a great core. They have a great look. Here's my thing. You don't necessarily need the the, the top five superstars. If you got a, a great superstar, an all-star becoming a superstar, and another perimeter all-star in the making, in a great nucleus around that who's bought into a system of team basketball, team defense. But I got to I gotta call a spade a spade. Even with all that, the Denver Nuggets – are soft butter biscuits. Grandma extra soft. They not coming to play. I don't understand how you got all this size. You got the reigning MVP and you're not playing through him. You're playing through the three-point line. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. And your coach has called you out twice. Twice. Called you out twice. And you didn't show up. You didn't show up. And here y'all go again thinking, we're going to get them back in Denver. That don't mean you're going to get them back at home. You could get beat by another 20 piece at the crib. Okay. You got to come with some tenacity, some kind of sense of urgency. I mean, Phoenix is getting whatever they want. I get it. They're playing great basketball, but you're not even making it difficult for them. And I don't understand why do you not utilize your strengths? I don't get it. I don't get it. How do you feel about the Suns in the, in the Nuggets series? My Phoenix Suns? Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, man, my Phoenix, my Phoenix Suns looking nice. <laughs> these, 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 these new my Phoenix Suns, boy, they looking nice. But no, in all seriousness, um, they're just playing basketball the right way. Um, and that's and that's what I'm starting to really appreciate about the Suns. You know, like as a as a Laker fan watching them, it's just a frustrating thing because I'm like, damn. But I also said, man, they better hit all them damn shots they was hitting against my team, and they are. Yeah. So, you know, it's like they, they're maintaining what they need to do. I told you, bro, that I felt this series going to be over yeah. in five, maybe six, if the Suns decided they wanted to play with their food a little bit. But they really don't have no answers. No matter who they put on Chris Paul, he's torching Compazzo. He's torching Monte Morris. He's torching Austin Rivers. And then Michael Bridges is having a, a coming out party. Mm. Um, and they just getting help. Dario Saric had a nice little stretch last night and helping him out. They're just continuously finding the next guy to give help. Yeah. And that's been the biggest thing. And championships teams go through this where you know what you're going to get from D-Book. You know what you're going to get from CP3. Who's going to be that third person? Or maybe that fourth person that's going to contribute just enough. Sometimes it ain't always about the box score. It's just yeah. about that hustle, that one rebound, that one die for the loose ball. All those little things is what's helping to contribute it to them. And I'm not disagreeing with you. I feel that they are playing through Jokic. I just feel that he can't, he is just too much because Aiden is actually making him also work on the other end. So in the, in the Portland series, he didn't have to work on the other end. Mm. Jokic was in foul trouble, so it was like, bye. But Aiden's not really in foul trouble and Aiden's making him work on the other end, which is causing him to have to play both sides which is kind of tiring him out and they just not getting into a rhythm. And then last night, you also see that Michael Porter Jr. was fought, uh, battling like back tightness or soreness. And, you know, he's had that history of that whole back thing. Yeah. And it's just, again, one of those unfortunate situations where health is hurting the team, especially because they ain't got Jamal Murray. If they had Jamal Murray and he had back tightness, it's a little different. But yeah. him basically being their second bucket getter is not good for them. So, Shout out to the Suns for continuing to do what they're doing. And I'm just looking forward to seeing what they do in game three. Big facts, big facts. Uh, and then 
uh, to our uh, last story before we get hot take Jake up in, Jay up in here. Philly, man, this series is interesting, bro. That it was like a roller coaster watching Game Two in Philly. Man. They came out blazing, up by damn near twenty points, and then you watch the game. They only up by five. Then they lose the lead. Then they get the lead. It was a great basketball game, and then they end up blowing them away at the end. How do you see this series going? Because I, I like I don't know. Atlanta is a great team. They're playing great. Hey, I would say that Trey Young didn't have the best of games, but the other players did pick up the slack. I think Ben Simmons defense had a lot to do with that. But here's my thing. I don't know how they're going to continue to um, guard uh, Atlanta and how Atlanta is going to continue to guard Philly. What I mean by that is what are they going to give up? Because at the end of the day, MB is going to get whatever they want. He's going to get whatever they want. He's going to get whatever he want to do. He he's, he's just a dominant big man. He's that guy. My thing is, it's a battle of runs. And Philly have these moments where they just can't score the basketball. But my man Milkshake, my man Milton, came out there and was hoping he couldn't miss a shot when they needed a spark because they needed some sparks. They needed some additional support. He came off the bench, provided some support for Philly, and got them over the hump to beat the Atlanta Hawks. But what I'm seeing right now is Atlanta is not going out without a fight. I still got Philly in six, but I think this is going to be a tougher series than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. How do you feel about the Philadelphia Sixers and 76ers and the Atlanta Hawks? Well, you know me, man. I got Atlanta at six. Mm. And, I mean, I could have backed off of it saying that Embiid is playing, but I got to stand by my conviction. Um, it's just, like you said, man, it's a game of runs, and these teams is like who's – like it's coming down to who's making the last run. Facts. Whether it's, you know, the last little run to push the lead to 20 like Philly did or the last little run to maintain the game like Atlanta did in game one. Right. Um, even though Ben Simmons played good defense, your star can't give you four points, three rebounds, and seven assists. That's unacceptable. That that come on, because it's like he has to play better with the hopes that a Shake Milton is still playing as well as he's doing, that <laughs> Bob Harris is still playing as well as he's doing. Um, but I think, you know, honestly, Atlanta prefers it like this. Yeah. Let's see if Shake Milton can maintain this. You feel me? Because they don't fear Ben Simmons. No one, Ben Simmons is no longer feared. I don't think he was really feared to begin with, but I feel like what, he can't shoot and he can't shoot free throws. So it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, we're going to leave him wide open. And when he goes to the hole, we're just going to foul him. Mm. And so that's one of those, my players that only can slash, he's a pure slasher build. You're a pure slasher build, bro. The playmaking slasher. No yeah. shooting, no There's other. Nothing else. Well, so the as long, as long as we can keep him from getting to the rim, well, he's neutralized. Yeah. You feel me? So I still like a lot of chances. Game three in the ATL gonna be rocking. A lot yes, of yes. lemon pepper Lou. A lot of a lot of Magic City gonna be rocking. And you know, like I said, man, I, I got Atlanta in six. I believe in them, and I'm gonna continue to believe in them because right now. My Bucks pick is not looking good, so I need Atlanta to make me look good, man. <laughs> anyway, let's get my man Hot Take Jay in the building to see how he feel about the uh, Philadelphia and all these other topics we talked about. Hold on. Let's get my man Jay. Y'all know he's about to be crazy with it. Y'all know he's about to be talking out of this world about these boys. So uh, let's get Jay up in. Jay, there he is. <laughs> yo, 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 Mike check. Mike check. You can hear me? Yeah, we hear you, brother. We hear you, man. How you doing today, Mike? Pretty good, pretty good. How y'all doing? We doing good, man. We doing good. So we got to ask you, Jay. Hot take, Jay, man. We know you're here to stir the pot. We know you're here to make, make it in. Is Ben Simmons a superstar for Philly? Does, is, 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 was his performance in game two unacceptable? Or or you can live with that if you got your role players playing great? Uh, People got to understand what Ben Simmons is. And Ben Simmons is uh, a level up from Draymond Green. And what I mean by that is no shade at, at Ben Simmons. It's, it's what are your expectations for him, right? Mm -hmm. and, and when I look at him, like, like he's, to me, he was the defensive player of the year. Like I think he's a universal defender, jack of all trades. 
Mm. And I think he's an undervalued asset. But just like Giannis, we need to understand what his lane is. Mm. And every single thing else around that needs to be built to complement that. And mm. when, you, when you buy him, you got to know what you're buying, right? And so um, to me, it's not, it's, I don't know. I do not indict him personally. I think that, I think that you just have to make sure that the roster around him and the scheme mm. is, is built for him. So um, I'm not going to place any undue expectations around him. If he don't want to pull, he don't want to pull, you know? Here's my thing though. It's not about he don't want to pull. He only shot three times yeah. in 48 in yeah. 35 minutes. He only shot the ball three times. Yeah. That's unacceptable in my opinion. And he only has seven assists. So if you ain't shooting the ball, then you better be getting damn near a double double from rebounding and assists in that department. You can't be an all-star, a preliminary all-star, mm -hmm. and you only score or shoot the ball three times and only score four points. That is unacceptable in my opinion. And I think they're going to need more from him. I'm not asking him to go for 30 or 40 points. I need at least 17 and 10. I need at least that. I need at least an average point guard. I need I need something that an average point guard is, can do, like 12 and 10, at least 12 and 7 or something. Don't give me four and seven. I need a, a double digit in one of those departments. But how do you feel about that series? Do you think that Atlanta is looking like the favorites right now? No, no. no. Uh, I think I that. Believe. Hold up, Jay. Hold up. Yep. Hold up, Jay. Damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Reason. You still don't believe? No, no, I don't. It's, no, here's the thing, dog. Trey Young is him. Trey Young is that dude. You said that. And, you, and, you and I'm not, I'm not backing yes, off that. <laughs> okay. But he's 6'1". Okay. And if that, and <laughs> the Hawks are pups and they're eventually, they're going to hit some adversity where, you know, again, butt cheeks get tight and, you know, the plan A ain't working. Mm -hmm. And in the end, like those growing pains are real. And the New York Knicks offense was so bad that they, they didn't have, they didn't have no teeth on the other end. So, you know, this is their first real test. So let's, and if Joel and B can manufacture some health, then, okay. then, uh, this is, this is gonna, this is gonna end, you know, so you, billion, uh, billion let me give you a, let six me, at the most. Let me give you a solid comparison. Cause I, so you see this as the Warriors Spurs when the Warriors is on, they come Yeah. Up. We lost to the Nuggets. I think too, we lost, there was some growing pains and there's some, there's some adversity you got to hit. And you just don't come out the gate like, you know, oh, Trey Young, I've arrived, you know, and now we, we get into the finals. Like, no, that's just not how this works. Well, I mean, I feel <laughs> that, and, I, and, I, and you're not wrong. So I'm going to come out there and say that now. You're not wrong in your take. I, I believe in your take. Uh, I just feel that because Ben Simmons is more of a star than a superstar, they have a fighting chance. Because I feel like, my boy Bates said a little earlier, you just let him be cook. All right, forget it. We're gonna concede his 35 to 40. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. But everybody else, y'all gonna have to work. And I think Atlanta has to get into that mode and and continue to shoot the lights out like they're doing. That home cooking gonna be good for them. And like I said, I picked Atlanta mainly because Embiid health, because I've had a meniscus injury. And all it takes, bro. And I don't wish this on him, but I know from personal experience. I wouldn't even say it. Huh? <laughs> don't even jinx him. Don't yeah. even say it. Yeah, but it's just just one. That's yeah. all it takes, man. And it's like, how will he recover from it? Because he's not out there playing with a knee brace. He's out there playing with a naked knee. And he's still being him. You feel me? He's still doing his he's little stuff. He's a clumsy dude, too. He's yeah, a exactly. <laughs> he, he kind of he's just a bigger version of what AD is. It just yeah. at, you know, 200 some odd pounds. And so it's just, I feel like Atlanta, as long as Atlanta can keep it close, because if Atlanta keeps it close, Philly is going to play Ben Simmons. And we both know Ben Simmons shoot free throws like he Ben Wallace. Mm. So uh, I'm up just bank on that. So Jay, what, what, is, what is your take? Um, what is your belief in the Suns right now? Because I know heading in, we all kind of talked about it as the Lakers being their worst possible matchup because of size. 
And you also saw that DeAndre Ayton a foul out because of AD. And that's a, that's the way we was all on. But they they conquered the Lakers. Now they're dealing with the Nuggets. And Aiden is, is, is going back and forth with Jokic. So how do you feel about these Suns right now? Have you turned the corner? Where you at with these <laughs> Phoenix Suns? Here's, here's where I'm at. Now, let me let me slide one thing, and, and we'll finish that later. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid ain't going to work, and they need to, you know, crap or get off the pot, so to speak, with, okay. with one of them. Because you can never maximize Ben Simmons with a player like Joel Embiid. And so I'm not going to fault them for going one way or the other. Joel Embiid could be MVP caliber for the next three years. And, but Ben Simmons got a 10 year shelf life. And if he even gets a little mini floater and some, and some free throw line extended, then it's a different conversation. So we can, we can, we can save that for another day. We can table that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, To, to uh, the, the Suns have a path. Because, uh, because Denver, um, they're 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 it's over, it's uh it's a wrap, right? Um, the Suns are too much, the guards are too much, and now all of a sudden Chris Parr looked like an all star because Denver just got nothing for him. And Jokic in space, everybody loves the MVP Jokic, and <laughs> and I can't say enough about him, but dude, Devin Booker and Chris Paul are just too much. There's just no resistance there, none. So to answer your question, they're going to uh, – I don't know if you guys remember that scene. It's one of my favorite scenes from Above the Rim when uh, Marlon Wayans or one of the Wayans brothers, Bombers, Bombers, Bombers Championship, right? When he's, I'm, all the, I'm all the point guards you need, coach. Like, dude, Clippers – I mean, uh, Suns can get through the Nuggets, and if they see Utah, that's over too. Quick. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Go bear in space, over. So um, – if the Clippers don't come out of Utah, the Suns might, the Suns might be in the finals. Mm. I, I don't like them. I don't like them, but that's Jay, the truth. Jay, I got them going to the finals. I don't give a damn yeah. who come out the other, other, other half of the, the West. I got them going to the finals. Clippers can give them some trouble. They just always in their own head. Mm. Mm. Speaking uh-huh. of the Clippers, since you took it there, let's <laughs> start there. Is the Clippers, like you said, always in their own head, or was it Donovan Mitchell in his bag? Which one was it? Uh, hey, you know, it's never absolute. It's never absolute. Donovan Mitchell was on his on his thing, and I just don't – four out of seven, he got to do it four out of seven. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. You don't you think Mitch could do it four out of seven? Is that is – that He did the- it last year against the Nuggets. He did. But, but they went home. They no, went home. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um, I'm just in the end, uh, backs against the wall. I just got to ride with Kawhi and Paul George, and I don't even like Paul George. I tell you, I don't like him. But I got to ride with their size and their skill set, and the fact that they got to have some pride about themselves. Mm. Mm. I, I, I like that. But here's my thing, and I'm gonna say this: I'm going like I told reasons. I'm talking up that game. To jet lag, I think the 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 role players who who have fresh legs, they played outstanding in the first half. Mm-hmm. In the second half, they didn't show up. But the superstars, the for all stars, whatever you want to call them, they wasn't there at all from start to finish. Kawhi had little spurts, but you could tell he was he was beat. He was beat, and then PG, he just did. I, I, I don't I don't know because I just be feeling like PG have his moments where he's in his back. And then PG has moments where he's just not locked in and he's not there. I think a lot of stuff has to do with PG trying to do too much. He makes the game harder than it has to be. He's a 6'9". He can go to the bucket anytime he wants. He got a great dribble package. He can shoot the ball. But what gets PG in trouble is when he try to do too much, overcompensate, over dribbling, trying to bully over, like just doing too much. Just play the game. Just go get your buckets. Don't make a hard like like one time. I seen him going to the hole. He got fouled. It didn't even like he tried to get an one. He just threw the ball and hit the side of the backboard and he shot two free throws. And then you got people. Look, here's my thing. If you're in a stadium and you got people calling you playoff Pete, overrated. Overrated. Mm-hmm. You, you got to lock into a different gear. 
You got to it's, – it's one of those things. And I think game two, he's going to lock in. If PG don't score 30 or 25 tonight, I'm going to be disappointed because you yeah. got this crowd calling you all kind of names. And you are on the mic saying, all they do is shoot threes, we good. All they do is shoot threes, we good. And then you giving up threes and you're not playing – half as near to your talent and your capability. I'm going to say a hot take that I, I, that, that I'm going to still hot take J name. And this is what I think it is. I think the biggest issue with PG, he's not the number one. Oh. I just, I, I really feel that way. I think he's not the number one. We know and, that. And, and, no, no, no. But I think that's a, a mental psyche thing. It for is him. a mental thing. Because think about it. When Paul George played his best is when he was deemed as the number one guy. And in Indiana, when he was balling in his bag, he was the guy. He was the face. He was the one. He was everything through Paul George. Whenever PG has went to a team where there's another number one guy, he struggles in. It's that back and forth, like, it's not my team, so if I do this, then this man ain't getting to rock. They ain't going to really rock with me, or maybe it's going to be some discretion. I'm telling you, I think since he's not the number one, that's the issue that he really be battling with. Because even at the last, the last second of the, the, the game, what did he do? He gave the ball up. But no, no, but who did he give it to? Who had the ball first? Paul George. Who did he give it to? Oh, no. He gave it to Kawhi. No, Rondo had it. Gave and he it gave it to Kawhi. And Kawhi gave it to – who Kawhi – who PG gave it back to? Marcus Morris. No, no, no. Who PG gave it back to? PG gave it back to Kawhi. And then Kawhi gave it to Marcus Morris. So it's like, Paul George's like, all right, you can take this one this time. PG's like, no, 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 no. You the man, you the man, you the man. You got it, you got it. And, and Kawhi like, no, nah, I can't shoot this. Here, here, Morris, here, Morris. So I really think that's the biggest issue, in my opinion, is that he's not the number one. So when he's not the number one, he don't play like the number one. I mm. think it's the braids. He was better with that. <laughs> I didn't like that. Um, them braids. I, he he just got him fixed, so he came out looking sharp last game. But the one yeah, yeah, the man, game before think, that, yeah. But Jay, man, you got to think about no. it. Back to your point, man. In Indiana, what did he have? He had a thing. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. And OKC, even though he struggled, he had a thing. These he was uh he was lightweight in the MVP category when he was playing next to Russ. Was it that second year? That yeah. Second but no, 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 no. Let me uh, let me have the mic for a second here. That's Basically, up. what um, with Paul George, I think it's a psychological t- thing. You can't discount because Chris Paul's the one getting all the love right now. But when you have a guy in your corner, I would say, what is Tom Brady without Bill Belichick? What is DK Metcalf without Russell Wilson? There are there are players when you are missing a skill set or a leadership role that you vitally need and you don't have it. It can leave you on an island looking naked and stupid, and you just you just don't know how to move. And with Paul George, Rondo's a good leader, and he understands the feel and the flow of the game, so he does bring a dynamic, but because of Rondo's inefficiencies as an overall player, he's not exactly what the doctor ordered. They got him on the low budget market in the in the in you know trading Lou Will, where I'm talking now you don't need a Chris Paul, but you need a, a Mike Conley. You need a Kyle Lowry? No, this is what we're doing right now. Get your ass over here or no, you get in this bucket. Let's, you know, run some split. Let's do something, you know. And Paul George doesn't know when to be ISO, get a bucket, Paul George, when to get the teammates involved. Like, and then he gets in his own head. And I know what that is. I've been there in my life when you just start, you can't do nothing right. And now, and then the goons is out for you. Like, it's just all snowballing. I feel for him. Uh, He can't be my number one, but... You know, hey. Hey, but Jay, you made, I think you made a very interesting point, bro. His MVP seasons were with who? OKC. Okay, hmm. That was a, no, he had, no, he, they was, they was sitting here talking about, he was top five in the voting. I yeah. don't know which, oh, was it the first year or was the second year, but. It was the second year. Yeah. And you saying you want somebody that's in your corner, right? Uh, when you looked at that Russ and PG dynamic, Russ was in his corner. He was. You feel me? They it wasn't that because Bake you kind of touched on him not necessarily being a number one, but Russ was okay with him being their KD per se. Mm-mm. I, I I'm trying to tell you. Nope. There it, the only real problem was Russ inconsistencies on offense that can shoot them out of games at times. But and the dynamic moments. between yeah, but their but their relationship, like Jay said, 
somebody that really is in your corner, somebody that's really telling you like PG, no, nah, man, go and go. A hype man too. You know? Yeah, I don't I don't think he's getting that same kind of, cause Bake, you touched nope. on the last show. He's not getting that same kind of love from Kawhi. He's not getting that same kind of love from T. Lou. He's not getting that same kind of like, PG, you go do this, PG, you go do that. Like he may say it because that's the right thing to say, but you said it and we can watch it. It's not happening. You feel me? That love that, bro, like get out your head. Like, for example, in the bubble, he struggled with um with depression issues or whatever he was going through in the bubble. Yeah. I feel like that's when a Russell Westbrook as your bro is is is, is in your hotel room and y'all really talking this out. Y'all yeah. sit down and y'all having that conversation. Kawhi don't to me, and again, yeah, it's just yeah. not He's not that guy that's gonna pull PG to the side and be like, bro, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Like, I need, you know, like, and and to and to y'all point, PG needs that kind of like that brother that's just really in his bag, that really just got his back and really care about him wholeheartedly, not just the game of basketball. Yeah, it's him wholeheartedly. So do and you I call that? Do you call that? I wouldn't say it's weak. I just think it's it's like it's a need. If it's, it's dependent. It's it's just like this. Just some people are built a certain way and wired a certain way. And and I'm like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dump on him. I just no. he's missing a vital piece to his success and is no yes. different than a whiteout who ain't got no QB. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or somebody in the corner and they just need that confidence. Sometimes they just need a hype man uh, to help them get on the right track. And I you know I feel bad because he he takes it on the chin. He takes yeah, it he does. Definitely do. <laughs> so I'm giving him a lot of love, man. But and when you said who's Tom Brady without Bill Belichick, Super Bowl yeah. at the end of the day. He, he still. <laughs> anyway, uh, to our last final topic, man, is this Giannis biggest game of his career, bro? Jay, is this make put up or shut up for Giannis? Is or is Giannis going to be, is, it, is, it, is this going to be Giannis going to be known as the best regular season player in the NBA, but he can't get it done in the, in the playoffs? How do you feel? This game, Jay, I need, I, I need, we need the truth, bro. But we out here holding back. Is this his biggest game or not? Well, it is. Put it, put it this way. I've been his biggest, you know, with number one fan since I saw the potential. I was clamoring for, for, for free three years before his MVP. I was like, oh my gosh, you see this dude? What is he? Is a freak? I never seen nothing like this. This is the game where I kind of, I get off the train. This Ooh. is the game. So if that pretty much answers your question, I hold him accountable. I still give Budenholzer the lion's share, but at some point, hey, KD's coming in. I'm checking myself in. I got I got to match this dude. I, even if you're not squaring up right in front of him, I'm always like, no, he is not the one coming in punking us on the inside. And to be honest, and, and I want you guys to watch this. I want you guys, when you guys are watching this game, Brooke Lopez looks good when he's scoring a bucket or hitting a three, but Brooke Lopez is the one. They need to play Giannis at center. They need to play Giannis 40 minutes, playing him 30 to 35 minutes and playing him um, where he can't exploit that five matchup. That's the problem. And so when I say it's all Budenholzer, I give Giannis about 30% because he's just got to see what's happening and have some assertiveness and not, pass the buck on somebody else bro ain't no you got 200 million you run the franchise you do what you need to do to make this happen and mm. if you don't if you don't have that assertiveness or that iq then i can't rock with y'all no more no I, I definitely feel like but i don't think that's in Giannis' nature right now i when even oh, yeah. after the press conference after he quit because they did quit in game two they tucked their tails and went, went home thinking that it's going to be different in milwaukee he was like it's kevin durant He's the best player in the world. You can't stop him. Nobody can never stop him. I don't want my superstar talking like yeah. that in the play. You can say all that when your ass is at home, okay? When you at home, you can pick <laughs> up Kevin Durant. You get, bro, I don't care if they got the leading rusher on the other end. I don't care. I'm not going to big you up until I'm on home. Until you send my ass home, I'm not going to be like, yo, this is the best player in the world. No, I'm trying to stop the best player in the world because it's going to make my, my stock rise. Instead of, it's Kevin Durant. He's the best player in the world. Nobody can ever stop him. That's not what I want. And that's why I think that this series could be over with. I think they may win one game and they may lose in five to the Brooklyn Nets because if you're a leader, if you're a leader, quits on the team. How do you expect 
the other players to play and, and, and get up for a game. When your leader is big enough to the other team, bro, I don't understand this. I don't understand this. I get it. We're friendly. It's cool. Not when we play it. Yeah, Not actually, when we play what it. What it could be is 2021 PC, everybody showing everybody love and you don't, and you're trying to find your way, right? He's transitioning to that adult stage where he's like, well, what should I ask? They ask these questions and they set me up and I can either be combative or I cannot. He made a similar comment before Miami started. I forgot what it was. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he made a similar comment where it was like, no, dude, you got, you got to show some dog right now. And then, and when, when he made that similar comment, they went out and swept Miami. Um, I got to look that one up. So I'm not, he might just be playing coy is what I'm getting at. I'm not going to fully incriminate him, but I'm with you because it's a red flag that you're mentally defeated before you step on the court is what you're getting at, right? Everybody, yeah. everybody too damn nice, bro. Exactly, exactly, it's exactly. Just, Hurting somebody's feelings, like, it, no. Man, it, me, the best way to answer the question is, respectfully, KD is great, but I'm here to bust his ass. Yeah, I want to see bust him out. I'm at his neck. You feel me? And I feel like you can give respect and still exactly you know, and hold yourself accountable just exactly. KD is KD we all know that you you don't have to tell us what yeah. we know bro because he's obviously torching y'all anyway so it's not like <laughs> we're not watching what he's doing to y'all so Major. there's no reason to hold that man's pocket as he's torching you and y'all walking around the jail cell together that's that's basically what I see Giannis yeah. is holding his pocket KD like come on son just go ahead and follow me around and you got to turn it to somebody that's angry. You yeah. feel me? People like, if you don't want to be my friend, then that's okay. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to win a championship. Yeah. I'm not here to be nice. I got enough friends. And yeah. you should respect the fact that I'm out here trying to kill you. Uh, you feel me? Figuratively. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you, hey, that brings back a memory, a uh, recent one with, with John Morant and Steph Curry. Something happened. I don't know what it was. But they was looking for a, a jaw to give Steph, you know, all this extra love. And Jaw goes, Psst. yeah, he's a killer, but I'm a killer too. And this was this was three months before the play-in game. And I'm watching him go out there and there's a swag to him. He's just like, I'm not, I'm not playing around. You may do this and you may be the best shooter of all time. And I love Steph. You can see in his tweets and everything, but at the same time, I'm coming at your neck. Period. Uh, Big guy. That's how it's supposed to be, bro. I, I miss, I miss the the days of the Kobe's, the Jordans, the KGs, the Rasheed Wallaces. You feel me? That, that it was like, what? No, they not even good, bro. They just here that we play bad. And they ain't nothing to do with them. Yeah. So. Well, it's a new NBA, man. Uh, what, what's your final words before we get up out of here, man? I, I, what, what's your takes on the, the games tonight, Jay? <laughs> Uh, my, well, my final takes is one, I'm happy Joel is manufacturing some health. And, um, and I really, if, 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 if the bucks are folding, then I want, I at least want to get some of that action with Philly, um, given Brooklyn, given Brooklyn, some, some competitiveness. So, um, and then my other one, my other, uh, hot take that I've been brewing for a minute and I, cause I didn't understand Aaron Gordon and I like Aaron Gordon uh with the nuggets and this year is kind of a mulligan for him but michael porter jr gotta go and go give you, what about it yeah what about yes for this no no so michael porter first off i was sitting there like what are the clippers doing drafting jerome robinson like 13 or something like one pick before michael porter jr so that's just always dookie on on the clippers face again what i'm really getting at here though is once they procured Aaron Gordon, you've committed to a defense that's just going to be soft as putty in the middle. And if Michael Porter Jr. is just going to sit out there and shoot threes, we don't know what he can be, and I'm not knocking that. But what I am saying is if you if you add Aaron Gordon, and Jokic is always going to be a liability when, when stuff hits the fan, then you need to turn around because you can get, I think, a King's Ransom from Michael Porter Jr., and turn around, go get you, not straight up, but you can go get you some Marcus Smarts, go get you another Jeremy Grant back. Go get somebody, get some dogs.
get some dogs to compliment, uh, you know, Jamal Murray and, and Jokic because um, you got Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. is, I mean, you can find somebody else to stand out there and shoot eight threes if that's all you're going to do. Mm. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, what about you, Reese? Nothing, man. I just feel like we wouldn't get it today. The homie was like, fed up. A little he homie. He was sleep, sleep. <laughs> sleep, sleep. So my final words is I need to try to give me some rest while he getting him some rest. Yeah. The homie been up since five. He been yeah. up since five. I've been there. Mine just turned 14, man. I, I, I've been there. I'm a, I'm a, you gotta, you gotta earn your stripes, man. You get you a, I'm a five star veteran. Yeah, I'm sure you. I'm sure you got two about two stars. You can you bring well, your way up. Well, I got two others. You feel me? Oh, dude, okay. So, oh, yeah. okay, okay. So I'm doing the baby thing. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Well, y'all are both in a category that I ain't in, so my stars is on zero <laughs> right now. But anyway, I can't wait to see the games today. Uh, I'm looking forward to see what Giannis and the Bucks' response is going to be, and what are the Clippers going to do, man? I hope Paul George coming to show up and show out and help the Clippers win Game Two in Utah, which is a hard place to play, man. But y'all let us know in the comments below how y'all feel about these series, man. How y'all think these series going to turn out? Always remember, stay safe, stay blessed, and to talk that talk we see y'all next week peace